In fact, the escalation continues, and it seems that both superpowers, Russia and the USA, are playing what in America is called a chicken game. This is when chickens run into each other. Or this is a game when guys in cars fly at each other. And who will swerve first? It looks like no one is going to be the first to fold, so, is a collision inevitable? Why? Here in the United States they announced that they are not going to send in troops. We know what American troops are like on Russian territory, these are the interventionists, we will treat it this way, even if they appear on the territory of Ukraine, they understand this, I said that Biden is a representative of the traditional political school. This is confirmed. But besides Biden, there are also plenty of other specialists in the field of Russian-American relations and in the field of strategic deterrence, therefore, I don't think that everything is rushing so head on here. But we are ready for this. I have said many times, for us it is a matter of life and death. But for them it is a matter of improving their tactical position in general in the world but also in Europe in particular, for them, it is a matter of maintaining their status among their allies. This is also important. But not as much as it is for us. It's interesting that you said that we are ready for this. Philosopher Alexander Dugin, he is a specialist in geopolitics. He calls for direct and practical preparation for a nuclear war. And the better we are prepared for it, the less likely such a war is, says Alexander Dugin. How can you even be prepared for this? Are we really ready for nuclear war? Well, from a military technical point of view, of course, we are ready. Our nuclear forces are constantly on alert. This is the first. Second, this is also a generally accepted thing. Our nuclear triad is more modern than any other triad. And only we and the Americans have such a nuclear triad. And we have come much further here. Ours is more modern. Our entire nuclear component, in general, we have approximate parity in terms of carriers and nuclear charges. But ours is more modern, everyone knows this, all experts know this, but this does not mean that we should measure ourselves by the number of delivery vehicles and nuclear warheads, but everyone needs to know about it. And those who need to know this, I repeat, experts, specialists, the military, they know this well. They are now setting the task of increasing this modernity and novelty. They have corresponding plans. We know this too. They develop all their components. We do this too. But, in my opinion, this does not mean that they are ready to start this nuclear war tomorrow. But if they want, then what should we do? We are ready. But maybe, to be more convincing, we need to conduct nuclear tests at some point, after all, we have no international restrictions for this. There is an agreement banning tests of this kind, but, unfortunately, the United States did not ratify this treaty, therefore, in order to maintain parity, we have withdrawn this ratification. Since this treaty was not ratified by the United States, it did not enter into final force because it did not receive the required number of ratifications, but, nevertheless, we adhere to these agreements, but we know that such trials are being considered in the United States, what is this connected with? This is due to the fact that when new warheads appear, as some experts believe, it is not enough to test them only on a computer, which means they need to be tested in their natural form, well, such ideas are floating around in certain circles in the United States, they do exist, 
We know about it, and we are watching too, if they conduct such tests, then I do not rule out something similar on our part, this won't necessarily happen, whether we need it or not, we still need to think about it, but it's possible, that we can do the same, but are we technically ready for this, yes, we are always ready, I want it to be clear, that these are not conventional types of weapons, this is a branch of the military, that is in constant combat readiness. Vladimir Vladimirovich, still, during the difficult moments of last year at the front, in connection with the events near Kharkov or Kherson, did the thought of using tactical nuclear weapons flash through your mind? For what? It was at the proposal of the then command of this group that we decided to withdraw troops from Kherson, but this did not mean at all that our front there was falling apart, there was nothing even close to this. This was simply done in order not to incur unnecessary losses among personnel. That's all, this was the main motive, because in conditions of combat operations, when it was impossible to fully supply the group of troops located on the right bank, we would simply suffer unjustified losses of personnel, because of this, it was decided to relocate to the left bank. And the correctness of this decision was confirmed by what the Ukrainian command tried to do in certain areas of the left bank. In the same village of Krinky, they simply threw their people there like into a meat grinder, that's all. They've been running around there barefoot lately, in the literal sense of the word. In the literal sense of the word. They tried to throw ammunition there using high-speed boats and drones, well. What is it? It's just for slaughter. They sent people there for slaughter. Once I ask the chief of the general staff. There is nothing secret here. I tell him, listen. Who do you think makes such decisions on the other side, after all, whoever makes these decisions understands that he is sending people to certain death? He says they understand this, I say, who makes such a decision, why are they doing that, it's pointless, it makes no sense from a military point of view, I say, from what point of view does this make sense, he says, I don't know, probably the top political leadership is doing this based on political considerations that they have some chance to break through our defenses. There is some chance to get additional money. Citing what they have there is some kind of bridgehead on the left bank. There is some chance to beautifully present your position at international meetings. The command has arrived. And all lower level bosses automatically issue it further, by the way. The military men who were captured there, who surrendered, they say that they didn't even know what situation they were getting into. Let's say they send new units there and say that the defense there is stable, so continue to help them, they could no longer even get to the left bank, this is a tragedy. This is an absolutely natural tragedy from a human point of view, therefore, why do we need to use weapons of mass destruction, there has never been such a need, that is, such a thought never occurred to you, no. For what? But weapons exist to be used. We have our own principles, what are they talking about, they say, that we are ready to use weapons, including any weapons, including the ones you mentioned. If we are talking about the existence of the Russian state, about damaging our sovereignty and independence, we have everything spelled out in our strategy. We didn't change it. Vladimir Vladimirovich. When the outgoing President Yeltsin invited you to run for president, your first reaction was, I'm not ready, this is true, this is direct speech, since then, of course, you have undergone a great evolution. If you had to write a telegram to yourself at that time, what text would it contain? You know, it's like a Yankee in King Arthur's court or something like that. It is impossible to answer this question. Because the question was asked at that time. 
In the historical and economic context in which our country was located, in the internal political situation from the point of view of internal security, and all this together prompted me to the answer that I gave, that I was not ready for this. This is not because I was afraid of anything, but because the scale of the tasks was enormous and the number of problems grew every day. Like a snowball, therefore, I said sincerely, and not because, I repeat, that I was afraid of something, but because I thought that I was not ready to solve all these problems, and, God forbid, I would make it even worse something, this is what we were talking about, that's why I said it absolutely sincerely, and if I went back, I would say the same thing. What was decisive then? You went for it after all. I was probably influenced by conversations with Boris Nikolovich. The most important thing, in the end. He then answered me, okay, fine, I understand you. We will return to this issue later, and we returned to this several times, in the end, he said that I am an experienced person. I know what I do. I know what I offer. And he told me some other things. I probably don't feel comfortable praising myself. But he said such positive words. Later he confirmed this again. In a completely positive way. I won't talk about it now. And when the work started, everything was completely different there, you know, when you work, you think that this needs to be done right now. But this needs to be done tomorrow, and everything goes, when you get involved in work, it's a completely different story, there is no time to be afraid anymore, but it's not a matter of fear. It's a matter of understanding. The ability to solve these problems, well, you yourself remember what 1999 was like in terms of the economy, security, finances, everything, 